it's a hope for you know, all the developers or all the experts who are here. He has already said that he is not going to look into the commercial aspects, but he will ensure that the KCB will ensure that there is a streamline of solar and solar solar business will happen in Kerala. That's again a good news. Before we start, and we have a uh, one more uh, panelist, Mr. Bengit Kumar, Director. Windstream Energy. Can I invite him? Let's put all our hands together to invite him to the stage. Before we start, let me just put in a status of Kerala solar installation so far. When we started National Solar Mission in uh, 2010 and 2013, the Kerala state was given in a target of 180. 1870 megawatt of solar installation in the state and today we have achieved by 22 that was in by 2022 1870 megawatt was the target but today we have achieved almost 700 megawatt which includes both ground mounted as well as rooftop out of which we have a 300 and 70 megawatt of solar installations in the rooftop. So if you look at the only 40 percentage of the target we could achieve in Kerala by 2022. Again, there is a new target has come from the national level, giving in a three gigawatt of solar installations in Kerala by 2030. That is the big target. That's the renewable energy altogether. By 2030, Kerala has to achieve three gigawatt of solar system. In other words, one lakh of rooftop in Kerala should have the solar system. If you look at today's scenario, we have almost close to 30,000 rooftop with the solar systems. The positive side of the uh, Kerala market is that now the new nodal agency or the DISCOM, KACB has come into the actual solar business, which has really given a boosting to the industry with the introduction of solar saura scheme. And within short span of nine months, KACB could achieve almost 100 megawatt rooftop installations. On top of that, ANET is also having in a multiple programs to promote renewable energy in Kerala. So ANIT has got a solar city program uh, in Trivandrum city is taken as a solar city. And again, we have in a smart city program which is happening in Trivandrum. 20 megawatt of solar installations is going to happen in all the government buildings in Trivandrum. The third option they have like in a PM Kusum, they have already floated in a um, uh, tender and uh, they are yet to finalize the L1 and L2. Now that gives us in a great opportunity for all of us who are gathered here, especially going to take the opportunities in the renewable energy. So since uh, our uh, uh, guest of the day, uh, now, Shada has already made an uh, opening remarks. Let me start with uh, um, Mr. Manu, who is the district engineer, Anat, on behalf of uh, uh, Director Anat, Narendra Nath Vailuri. Let him start with the programs, what they are going to have with an immediate future, and what they have done so far. I hand over to Manu. Good morning to all. <coughs> Thank you, Tarek Selex. Uh, as I mentioned, my name is Manu, District Engineer Ernawala. Uh, as our CEO, Mr. Narendra Nadvaluri, I was is unable to attend this gathering. So I am here. So I am delighted to attend this gathering for Suri on Kerala. As an as a organization for the um, establishment 1986. Uh, for uh, renewable sector and all, as per uh, as per those, this all solar promotions. Now, what 
Mr. Darrell Alex and Nausha Sir taught. We are also the part of Saurya Tejas, Saurya projects. As uh, Annette got an uh, target uh, allocation of 25 megawatt. Around 20 megawatt we have already got the registrations and 6.5 megawatt installations are on process. Uh, three point, uh, nearly 3.5 uh, megawatt is commissioned. And uh, result uh, in the last day, uh, there is a project that's for the uh, common people, uh, uh, for the life mission projects. We have around one megawatt installation that's in, uh, around to 400 to 500 uh, life mission customers. Uh, we are installing a uh, two kilowatt system there. Uh, with, uh, with, we can generate a uh, 62, so, sorry, six to 7,000 rupees beneficial, annually beneficial for the uh, very ground level peoples. And next, uh, what other, other other projects are uh, PM Kusuma projects. As part of the PM Kusuma projects, we have identified agriculture customers. That's around for, for, for 45,000, sorry, 45 lakhs agricultural customers are identified in Kerala. Uh, around 2.75 lakhs are enjoying the free electricity, uh, which was subsidized from the agriculture department. We are focusing on the, uh, that customers around 10 percent. That is 45,000 uh, customers are, uh, as a first phase, 45,000 uh, 45, customers are identified. For that, uh, we are uh, tendered around uh, 9,000 cust uh, customers solar installation personally with a subsidy of uh, 30 percent from the state finance and 30 percent uh, from the sorry, uh, central government. Rest of the amount will be uh, funded by added by NABAT fund as a loan, and uh, this agricultural customers can, can enjoy the free electricity, the, the green electricity, and that will make a big change in the agriculture field. After all, next is the uh, carbon neutral governance program. As part of carbon neutral government governance program of government. We are uh, renting electrical vehicles to different government. Uh, around 196 vehicles are personally distributed to different uh, government departments uh, through uh, rental uh, given up. This process is ongoing. And as of uh, as for the promotion of uh, EV vehicles, we are also into uh, in the EV ch charging stations in Indonesia. As a high speed charging station, 50 to 60 kilowatt high speed, these DC charging stations are these charging station hubs are implemented. Around uh, 11 numbers are presently uh, commissioned in uh, uh, all over Kerala. F uh, few, uh, few of the installations are uh, in the process in the NRA DC itself in Kochi Metro, uh, uh, in Pusat and Mutam will be uh, commissioned in the coming months. Well, this was uh, what uh, already Terence uh, thought that uh, Toronto is going to be a solar city. As part of that, uh, 100 megawatt is allowed, allowed for the rooftop projects itself. And around 20 megawatt is going to be implemented on, on the, all the uh, government departments' buildings. And all the street lights are going to be solarized. And it, it, it will be. be going to be expanded up to oh, 3000 megawatts what we are actually planning for. Other, we are uh, on the steps to uh, hydrogen projects also. That is in the primary stage. We have some discussions and uh, uh, other things happens on the hydrogen. Uh, apart from that, I would uh, like to share something other than that is that uh, uh, service, service related issue, what exactly the UTDC scale project customers face right now uh, from the uh, EPC and the uh, OEM uh, OEMs. We expect uh, all the OEMs uh, to uh, provide the uh, part availability or other service provided even in better Kerala uh, itself. And apart from that, one more thing, uh, and it is uh, for this all the projects we are. Uh, uh, into a tender for OEM availability. All the I request all the uh, EPCs is gathered to, uh, to join with ANAT for this 
uh, all the projects uh, by emballing your products in the OEM environment. Um, that's about from my side. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Manu. It's very happy to know that you have uh, more projects coming in and uh, you are one of the founding pillar to boost the, the solar industry in Kerala. So we will move to the next speaker, uh, Navsha sir. I know that KCB is being in an iconic uh, um, disco in, in India where you have been invited by the UP government to appreciate the way you are doing the Saura projects in Kerala. So definitely that's in a, uh, one more further to your crown. But looking at the, the promising project of uh, MNRE, the DBT scheme, which is going to really uh, take the momentum across India, not only in Kerala, but it, across India. So can you just uh, uh, put some light on DBT scheme versus the Saura scheme? So I'm asked to explain something related to DBT scheme. So Saura, we have already started with as a pilot project. And we have selected 38 numbers of developers. It's doing perfectly well with the stipulated conditions of tenders, which there is a peace of mind as well. The consumers can relax and it is going through. Now, MNRE has introduced a new system, which in fact we cannot call it as a DBT, but the methodology which they have to have implement this is under DBT scheme, direct benefit transfer. So let me sort out or tabulate the difference between the Saudi scheme which KCB is taking directly as well as the DBT scheme for MNRE is envisaged. So the basic difference is that in DBT scheme, what we call it as MNRE rooftop scheme, the total amount including subsidy, the developers has to hand, sorry, the, the beneficiaries has to hand over to the developers. Whereas in Saura scheme, the empanel developers need to be given those part of the total amount minus subsidy. Let me make it clear. Our lowest bidder price for the Saura project is 63,500. Let us calculate roughly 60. So here, up to 3 kilowatt, 40% subsidy is there. After the subsidy only, the consumers need to give in case of the Saura project. But in the other way in, they have to give the entire 65,000 rupees to the developers. The subsidy amount will be handed over to the consumers directly from MNR, the central government. In the other way round, KCB will be given the amount. We will be auditing and dispersing this amount to the developers. Fortunate to say, most of the developers who are sitting there have a home in the DBT scheme as well as in the Saudi scheme. All the empanel developers under Saudi scheme is also being exposed and tied up with the DBT scheme of MNR. Coming to the technical part, which we are going to face it in the near future, MNR has clearly mentioned a technical specification how to do this work. This is related with IEC and other standards as well. But whatever is going through Saudi projects directly from the tendered item, we have a specification which has got very, very clear description. What, how to do the thing, how to do the conductors, how to do lightning protection, what the speedy must be there, what are the panels, what are the inverters. Each and everything must be placed in position in that case. So, we have a meeting with MNRE. I myself has attended a couple of days back. And many quarries were still there. Now, the, the customers are not clear about what to do and what not. How is this procedure somehow? What is the portal? There is an app called the Sandesh app. Through the Sandesh app only, a consumer can 
register in the system. So, what is a Sandesh app? It is an app developed by NIC of Government of India itself. That need to be clear. In KCB system, we are having an e-kitten. I was rightly explaining in the inaugural of the speech. So, there actually it is a single click. They can select the developers and as an EPC itself, everything will be navigated accordingly until the project is completed. Here, whenever a consumer apply for a system, it will not go to the developers. We have empanel almost 386 numbers of developers is on the system. Some 600 plus consumers are also registered in the system through app. So here, the main thing what the common public or the developers has to understand is that whenever the consumers are registering this, this application will directly come to the KCB. From KCB, we will be distributing for the feasibility study to the tax and developers. Whereas, the other way around, they can directly select the developers of any kind and everything will be done from the developers. So, the subsidy also, there is a difference. The subsidy part is not same for this as well as for the direct transfer scheme. When the subsidy part is limited to 14,500 per kilowatt. In other Saudi scheme, it will go up to about 20,000 per kilowatt. This difference is there. How it is coming, well, that also you can understand. When the time passes by year by year, MNRE is trying to limit the subsidy. It was a high amount three, four years back and it is being linearly decreasing down. But the tender which has already been for KCB in position, that is being done and that price is about 14.5 versus 20,000 per kilo. Whenever the consumer completes the installation, the consumer is the mandate for uploading the technical documents in the MMR. It is a different portal itself, designed almost the same way as you can use to design. There is a discount loading, there is a consumer loading. But they have to research to some data, but they have to come here for the union. There is a admin portal, or we can take a discount portal. Through the discount portal, we have given all uh, password as well as username to 767 sections in Kerala State. All the deputy chief engineers, 25 members of the state, has given role, and they are also given the password and they are going to accordingly. In addition to that, the division officers. The executive interest has already been given. So, this is the process which we are sitting in through. But the difference between these two has to be priced to all the beneficiaries as well as the developers, and we have to navigate according to this open to all questions at the end for the scheme. Thank so, you. just uh, adding to what you said, so parallelly, two programs are running. There is uh, one you have a stringent uh, safety rules on the Saura project, that is on the DBT. So there is nothing much mentioned on that. So how do you control the safety aspects on the DBT schemes? Well, this is a question to be answered uh, now. Many beneficiaries or the people who are interested in this is asking many questions from the state because people are still in the dark what they feel. Because this scheme is being uh, declared by the government. But what I understand is that the clear pros and cons has not been reached to the consumer so far. Many exploiting options are also being there now. So the technical terms concerned, I will just brief about the challenge. A developer X can be any one of the developers who sitting over here is doing the work in part of Kerala in one of the districts. In a house. The same developer will be doing the same nature of subsidy implementation for in his neighboring house. One man has to pay the full amount to the developer, to the same developer, 
the neighboring man who is registering in this has to pay the amount less than subsidy. A technical specification one man is having from the SCB and he has to go through. It clearly says this much between the pair. If there are three pits for the SCB, if somebody else says, describing an IEC standard saying that an applicant must be two, then again this also has to be addressed. A consumer is given the option to upload technical details. SPD, a consumer, when he says or sees, should not be fair enough to understand what it is, how it is. Again, more important here to discuss that the risk of uploading, who is having the risk of this technical uh, up, 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 uploading details. When a consumer uploads that, the risk is on him. The developer doesn't have any response. He has to declare that this is the protection that he says, this is so, yes, 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 and yes. But here now, let us think about the section officers, 767 section officers throughout the Kerala. A man who was following a technical practice till this moment, and now the DBT scheme also the consumer will be uploading and it will be coming to the same man. Technically, how he can take two technical decisions in the same platform? What is going to come to him? He will say that, no, 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 it must be there, standard is like that, this way he has to do. Other way, if they are doing that, he will not be able to accept it. So this confusion should not come into field. So what I feel is that the mandate of technical specification must be left open to the discom itself. If Kerala state is following certain stipulated technical details, approach, the DISCO must be given that mandate to follow the same thing. That must be throughout the state. A rooftop is installed, harmonics are being injected, certain testing is mandatory as per the grid code, but in the DBT scheme, if that testing is not mandatory, so, a consumer who is in the next house will be getting all the privilege for testing and confirming that it is okay. But in this, if testing is not mandatory, don't you feel it as a baby? So, this always has been stipulated and discussed with certain government authorities. So, what I think is that to make this in two streams, all the states, MNR, distribution of authorities, other districts, even the representatives of EPCs and developers has to put their heads together and see how does this can be done. For information that we said that these two go in parallel, it will not match. This will be going one way and the is going to go the other way. There is no common points between these two at all. Whenever this is going as such, what I feel is that this is the same thing because whoever connecting a solar plant, if the harmonics and other DC injection levels are not being uh, checked or controlled, it is affecting our system. See, 25% as per the company can be the system without any problem. Here, 3000 megawatt of a rough capacity, maximum 1000 can be injected without any problem. Now we are almost at 6700 So it will be reaching 100 in before 31st of uh, March. But when more and more will come, we have to ensure our grid is safe and stable, or else the quality of the grid will be affected. So, in the, both the systems have to be studied, and we have to make a common, understandable, technically viable, good for the grid and good for the public, good for the developers, and the profit also must be there. That can be done. Now, we, if we do a next tender, I'm sure that if the steel structure and other cost of the uh, panels, the price should obviously go high, it will not be 63,500 at all. In the other DBT scheme, the, the developers are free to put a price. What I could see is that the price put up by the developers are much higher than the lowest cost identified by KCP. So, economic impact is also there.